Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, when we left last time, we were mortising and installing the hinges. But the director here, one of them, decided that I need to show you more on the hinges. So we're going to. Now this, again, this is just a straight butt hinge. And they don't forgive much. You're either right or you're wrong. But that's not necessarily true. And as the last time on the webisode, I told you that if you've got a door that's sticking out here a little bit, if you bump the door out here, what you do is you twist it in. Same thing. Now the reason that is is because I can actually sand the face of this door off a little bit to bring it down flush and cheat. You know, a lot of woodworking is about cheating. I ain't going to tell you how I know that, but hang around. You'll get a lot of cheats. And speaking of cheating, all right, remember I only put one screw in. Now I'm going to show you something. The bottom, I did this for you. The bottom of this door is setting out about a sixteenth. Right here. Top of this door is in, not quite as much. So the first thing I need to do is I need to move this door in a little bit. Now pay attention to your hinge because you can mess this up. It has to move back on the hinge to go in. So that means when I open it, it's got to come toward me. Here's your cheat. Take your little drill bit. If you loosen, you have, there's two things you can do. The first thing you can do is because of the size of the screw hole in here, you can take your drill bit, sneak in right here, and drill it. That way, when the screw goes in, the head of it's going to pull us back. Now, in this case, I would actually want to drill on this side. The other thing you can do is you can loosen it. If you don't think that's going to be enough, loosen your screw up just enough that when you push it down, it'll let this door slide just a little. See it? See what it's doing? Let it move a little. Okay, now, I'm gonna drill this. You know, probably. Now I'm loosening it up. Okay, once I've got it drilled, then I'm just going to take my big bit and just bump it a little bit. All right. See, by only having one screw, I get two shots to get this right. This, ti this tiger maple is hard and I don't want to be breaking screws. So this is a steel one. Brass plated or something. Hardware store. Always get you some extra ones at the hardware store because they don't make very good screws and the heads strip out in them too. Oh yeah, don't drop brass screws. If you if you spill the whole bag, magnets don't work. Let's see what we got. I'm down pretty close. That's not bad. And then also kick my top a little, 
out a little bit. All right, I'm going to get the rest of the screws in this door. Then we're going to come back and look at some other things with doors. Okay, got all my screws in. Now, a couple things I want to talk about here a minute. First is, Ivan asked me how long I usually leave my doors and stuff in glue till I feel it's safe to, to mill it or wood in general. Now that's, you know, in my shop it's about 70 degrees and using tight bond three, within an hour I've usually got a tack. I've got a glue, it, it's stuck enough that I can take it out of clamps and it's gonna, not going to do much moving. And you notice in the case of these doors, you know, I took these doors out of clamps probably within five or ten minutes because I didn't want that glue to set solid until I got it in my case and got it wedged in place just to make sure that I was fitted to the case. Um, you know, Tight Bond 3, if, if it's two hours, two or three hours at 70 degrees, you, you can pretty much start planing it. I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to try to do anything real aggressive. Common sense says an overnight dry is best. You know. Okay. The other issue that that I've seen a lot with doors is that when you're closing a door, you'll get what I call a pop. Meaning that this door is trying to push back. Simply means you got to bind somewhere. Something's pinching. The most common area, number one, is be careful on your hinges. Because this leaf has to fold in on top of this, if this is really tight, then this part of the leaf can pinch right on that opening. If it does, just simply take you a chisel and just pare it back just a little bit to clean it up. I can't do it and you see it too. That's one area. Another big area is as this door rotates, it'll pinch right here. Right there. Make sure your corners are clean. That's another one. Pretty simple. If this is, and we've got a door over here I'm going to show you just in a minute that's popping pretty good. And one of the easiest things to do is look inside of here and look at your stops, top and bottom, and you'll see where it's touching on the door. Okay, the ideal thing is for the door to touch at this point, and that's pretty much it. We want it to be pretty free back here. So, if, you, if you're touching in here, or you're binding up, either sand it, take a, you know, take a little plane, little fine plane and just knock a little bit off. Or sand it, whichever you want to do. And that'll get your door closed and nice. Now, butt hinges are probably, while they're not difficult, they're probably one of the more difficult. Horton also has what's called a non-mortise hinge, and I want to show this to you. It's a modern version of the butt hinge. But you notice something, it's only one leaf. And exactly what the name implies, you don't have to mortise it. Now this is an antique brass one. But if you look, what happens is, and you can mount it either way, you know, I usually, I don't know how I usually do it, I didn't do it. But you notice here in the top, you've got a slotted hole. And then on the other little leaf, you've got a vertical hole. So by using them initially and drilling and setting it at the center, if you need to move a door, you can move it up. You can move it in and out and adjust. And you don't have to mortise. Then you've got your fixed screw points here that you go ahead and you lock the the, the hinge in place. These are those I like them a lot. There is one thing you need to know. 
if you're going to use a nine mortise because of the way this thing works and how tight it comes in they can pinch on the back of this remember I told you you want to take a you want to cut a little one degree back angle on this that gives you plenty of space in here and the other thing with a bind or a pinch is make sure your screws are in in countersunk correctly because the screws can butt each other and cause you a pinch on the non mortise hinge cut you about a two degree back angle on that prevent your hinges from ever pinching or binding up but they make for a quick easy hinge okay over here that in the door see that door is doing pretty good this door see it, see it bouncing back when I look inside of here what I'm seeing is that right here is hitting here I didn't look at the top it's a little snug there so I have two options one is like I showed you I can hand plane a little bit off this a little bit off of this or sand it or I can take a rabbit plane and simply take a little bit off my doorstop right here now the planes not going to come all the way up but one of the things with the rabbit plane is you can also th this is a Stanley is you can simply take the top off and you now have a corner plane that and I just finish it out I got some glue in the corner there too these make nice for getting a little glue out of the corners I think mine's a Stanley number 92 or something like that I'm not a all these guys get out there and they're always talking about oh I got a such and such and such and such number and whatever and I'm like I got I got one of these <laughs> go figure all right bounce all gone <coughs> so real quickly this point this point the hinges binding on the mortise the screws butting each other those are your common pinch points okay now we're coming to the point that we're ready to install some hardware and we're ready to start looking and thinking about finishing because we're pretty much done building while we got these doors open I'll, before I forget to mention it make sure you take a chisel and go in here in the back of here and make sure you get any glue or anything out you know globs or anything so that prevents your glass from setting flat now you don't have to sand all this up in here just make sure it's pretty pretty clean doesn't have any lumps because if you get any glue lumps and when you we put the glass in you can twist your glass and break it that ain't good because we're actually going to be glazing these now somebody's going to want to know well can I use sticks yep you can but because of this thin mullion in here if you're going to use sticks and you're going to pin nail them in like using a 23 gauge pin nailer what you're going to want to do is put that stick the two sticks in here and put your little clamp on it and pin nail it from both sides because otherwise most of your pin nails is going to go through this and interfere with you getting the other one in so I hear the other thing with finishing you know we've been doing a lot of work we've been cutting sawing you know all these edges and whatever are going to have saw marks and whatever you can get in here and you can sand all of that be very careful when you do that because it's not hard to take a sanding block 
and round that edge and it's going to make your gap look bigger. An alternative is a simple card scraper on these intern on these edges of just scrape it smooth. I already done that one. I'm just getting dust there. Because the reason I'm doing that is because I'm not trying to get a whole lot. But you can take and, you know, work, once your doors are in, take your little card scraper, sander, level everything. It does nice. I've already scraped them some, so they're not picking up a lot, but that's to let you know that's the way that works. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to come back and we're going to install our hardware. Now the way we're going to do this, we're going to secure one door, and then we're going to have a twist knob that comes over and secures the other door. One of my pet peeves always has been, I don't like that gap in the middle of this door. I don't like the fact that when I get back and look at it, I can see through it. Sides usually don't bother me too much because they, they, they darken, but the center does. But when we come back, we're going to look at how we make a closure for this, closure strip, and what we're going to, all we're going to do is we're going to wrap it out the back here, wrap it out the back on this, install a piece on glue a piece onto this so that when this this door so when this door shuts this one closes over top of it then we're going to put a bolt or lock in the top and the bottom of here to secure it and then our twist lock same thing you would be doing if you were using a lock because we got to secure one so the other one can lock to it okay we'll be right back all right let's talk about closing these doors and the hardware now what I chose was just simply scushion two knobs. This, the knob on the right is made to twist and just opens. You've got a little finger in here that goes in. Now this is a, you can also get a longer finger. I think this one's about an inch or so and then you can also get a longer finger if you need it. It's just a little brass finger and as you turn it, it secures in place. Now the short finger, this is what I wanted to show you. This is our closure. Now all I did was rip it on a table saw. That's pretty obvious. I'll clean this up when we're sanding or whatever. And these are my bolts for securing my door. All right. And we need to talk about them a minute. Now, I like them, but my door is actually, well I'm right at seven eighths. If you got a three quarter inch door, the width of this, or the depth here on the bottom is exactly three quarters of an okay, inch. Okay, let me think, let me take this out and show you what I'm talking about. One screw comes in from the top and one on the face right here. All right, here's what we got. This is the bolt. And you have a slide on it that comes down and operates the plunger. Pretty simple, actually. But we have to mortise it in. This width is three quarters, so if you set it flush, then you're going to wind up on a three-quarter door with this end being extremely thin here or showing. We don't want that. Now the mortise I've got set on this right now is about seven sixteenths. That's for the depth. Again, it sets in and you got your plunger. Yeah, I know, it's a little fancy, isn't it? 
Yeah, it is. It's pretty though. And I've got one in the top and the bottom. Now the reason I've got one top and bottom on this one is because of the butterfly shelf. If I had straight shelves, I could just use one and go right into the shelf from the center. Now here's a tip. A tricky part can be drilling the hole for the plunger. As well, you've also got a little brass escutcheon. You got a little brass escutcheon that gets mortised in up in here. But the easiest way to do it is drill your hole first. Now here's a trick. Drop the plunger. Take you some stain. This happens to be a gel stain. Coat the end of your plunger. You got, you already know what I'm going to do. Close your door. And your hole's marked. And you got stuff on your finger. Drill your hole, make sure it's fitting good. Then, you just put this over it and make sure. Now remember, the critical part of this, the hole in the escutcheon is larger than the plunger. So make sure when you mortise this in that you keep the front edge of this to the front edge of this hole. That keeps your door from being squiggly. Then you just simply again lock everything in place. Twist it shut. Now with these, if you can zoom in here, you've got little teeny pinholes in it. These are for nails, little brass nails. Don't try to take a hammer and just drive them in. Make sure when you do your final assembly, make sure that you drill these before you do that. And make sure that they're in alignment. Now here's a good idea. In the construction process where we're at now, draw you a straight line, line this up, Go ahead, because these are hand done, these holes can be not exactly the same on each one. So don't, that's just handcrafted. Drill your hole, then mark, take a piece of masking tape, put on it, and mark where it goes. Now the other thing is, on the hinges, same thing. Now one of the things with these hinges is they're extremely precise. I just love them. But, the, and, the, and the same goes for the non mortise. But, it's always a good idea when you got everything lined up, just in case there could be that least little bit of top variance, take up some magic marker on a piece of tape and mark each hinge so you put it back exactly where it came from when you break it down. Okay, let's go over here and see how I did the back of the door create the closure strip. Now here's another tip. If, now this would be a right hand open door. In other words, we're opening the right hand door first. That's just my preference. If you happen to have a door, listen carefully, it's got a little twist in it. This bar, this plunger, you can push it and close it. So if you're having an issue with one of your doors, common sense says go ahead and put this where it can hold that, where you don't, where you can hold that door shut tight. Now the other thing I want you to notice, these are not in the center of this cabinet. Never. A good rule of thumb is I try to kind of come right across the top of that rail. Did y'all get that? Three times in a row, I didn't got it right. Rail style. Rail style. That's a raised panel. Anyway, kind of keep it level there. Gives you a nice proportion. Now, I'm just showing you the hardware I use. But you can certainly make your own choices. So let's go over here. What we're going to do is we're going to look at how I mortised for the lock or the 
slide and how I cut out for the closure strip. Now here's another thing. You can mill you some thin pieces, you know, 3 16 or something like that, round your end. Come in behind, behind your shelf right here and pin nail it up. Let it stick out about a quarter of an inch and that will give you a complete total closure on all of your doors. Creates a seal, if you will. Just remember that pinch thing. If you do that, take the edge of this door right here and either take a hand plane or sand it or just a little chamfer bit and kind of take a little bit off this corner so that at the point where this turns, it doesn't pinch on your closure molding. Got that? All right. We're going to go, we're going to go run a router.